Welcome to Disrupt Education. I'm Peter Hostras of the host. Hey, I got a great guest today. Mike Dolly is with us today. Mike, how you doing today? Oh, I'm living the dream today. How about yourself? Oh, man, nothing better than living the dream. Um, that was a, a brief intro before we went to add. I um, wanted to give you a shot here to kind of talk a little bit about who you are and where you are right now and what you do. Uh, so I am currently a business education and computer science teacher at Elkhorn Area High School. Uh, on top of that, I'm also the president of the Wisconsin High School Esports Association, which is a nonprofit governing body for the state of Wisconsin and our esports presence. And then I'm also a member on the executive council for the Interscholastic Esports Association, which is a national body that is about 15 different state associations combined, servicing over 40,000 students competing in esports across the country. Not much going on there. <laughs> no, no, never well, a busy day. Yeah, right. Uh, we'll we'll dig into that uh, even more because I think uh, a lot of our listeners are like you know curious about esports uh, as well. Um, but let's dive into the the fun question: um, your educational journey, right? So I always ask what what kind of what kind of student was Mike? Uh, so. I guess going just back to high school, I was not a good student by any means. Um, I had a couple of my favorite teachers and I made sure that I had them for four years, but uh, I was usually bored in school. I had uh, a decently long disciplinary uh, rap sheet, um, but I wasn't really connected to school. Um, I played a lot of video games outside. I, I was an avid skateboarder. I actually was sponsored to play trading card games by the local comic shop. Um, and so we traveled around the country uh, playing like Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, stuff like that. So um, I went to the University of Wisconsin Whitewater um, after I transferred from the Milwaukee School of Engineering. I didn't have a good time there. Didn't do my due diligence as a high school senior and, and actually look at a bunch of schools and figure out where a good place would be for me. Um, got accepted to one and I was like, all right, cool. I guess that's where I'm going. And so, uh, I, I, I transferred to Whitewater and I started going into business ed. Um, I like the idea of working in business and doing something along those lines. Um, so I decided to just combine both uh, education and business. So that way, if teaching doesn't work out, my skill set transfers. Um, that was my thought process. Uh, after graduating in 2012, I got my first teaching job at Arrowhead High School. Uh, shortly into that, I had a student give a presentation on a video game world championship. And I was like, go on. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you have my interest. <laughs> and so I started the program there. I uh, got it approved as an extracurricular and I pushed through some video game design curriculum as well. Um, so that way then it was, it was a combination of the two. So we learned about how to build video games, why video games are popular, what goes into making them. And then after school, then we played video games. Um, I had a couple of schools that, or a couple of teams that were competing in national leagues that I found. And then on a Friday, I would have 50 to 70 kids storm my classroom just to come and hang out and play just casual video games with their friends. Like I literally had parents dropping off TVs so that kids could crawl under a table to find an outlet, plug in their TV so that they could play with their friends. Um, so it was like this really big community that we just built at school. And you know, I'm I'm literally shoving kids out of my door at five o'clock on a Friday so that I can go home and also play video games. Um, so, it, I mean, that that was a big push. And um, we eventually got invited down to uh, Robert Morris University in Chicago to go have like a esports invitational uh, with other schools around the Midwest. Went down, found two to three other schools from Wisconsin, and we just started talking and uh yeah, one summer in about 2016, I just started, you know, putting together some of the materials, sending out informational material to other schools, just trying to get started. Started with seven schools five years ago, and uh, we just we just broke 105 schools this year competing in esports around the of the state. Uh, everything from high schools to middle schools. We have our smallest school is uh, nine through 12, an enrollment size of 56 that are fielding teams. We have middle school programs that are fielding teams, uh, everything to your, like your big massive D1 schools here in the state of Wisconsin. Um, so it's just exponentially grown. Um, I, I 
started a master's in 2016, finished that up in 2018 through UW Stout online. Um, and then I actually got poached out of teaching and I went into uh, instructional systems design and e-learning training uh, development with some LMS administration on there as well uh, for a company that worked with like uh, construction, mining, agriculture, and outdoor power equipment. So that was that was a fun three years sitting on the other side just to see what it was like. And then COVID hit and uh, business slowed, obviously. And um, I decided that I needed to do something that, you know, I, gave me purpose or at least that I could say like I'm earning my paycheck. So I went back to teaching. Um, and since I've been at Elkhorn for two years, you know, it's uh, the connection that the esports program has helped me build in year one. In year one of being there, I had already felt like I'd been there for five years just because of the interaction that I had with the kids. Um, like in my first year, I think I was already quoted one to two times in the yearbook. Um, you know, I think I wrote seven letters of recommendation my first year being at Elkhorn. Um, so just using esports gave me that connection to the students already. And like, I just know that it's helped me solidify my position within the, the school body as, and, and kids want to take my class yeah. just because of my involvement with that. Talk about somebody who's taken like their actual past in high school and then like created something while, it, you know, and, and helped grow it. Um, that's amazing. Thanks for sharing that, Mike. Um, the, another question that, that I wanted to ask is, you know, as, as these are growing, I've, I've been a part of, uh, business, uh, it always falls in business education for some reason, uh, video game designing and, and, and a lot of these esports uh, uh, clubs and they're massive. Uh, the students are already talking with each other virtually slash pre pandemic. Um, Talk us through a little bit about what what was it like uh, through the pandemic where you were um, as you came back into teaching. Um, was it uh, remote? Did it? I mean, with even you can just you know look at the esports uh, part of it. Um, but what was that transition like for those students? Like, I'm going to assume that it was probably pretty easy because they were already headphones and going at it uh, on a on a gaming route. Um, but yeah, just want to grab your, your ideas there. Um, being able to work through COVID <clears throat> had its own challenges. And I think it sh uh, shed a lot of light to certain situations that we have here in the state of Wisconsin and around the country um, as far as the digital equity divide. Um, in Wisconsin here, we learned how many students only have quality internet access available while at school. And so being remote there was uh, an extreme disadvantage for many of our students around the state. And so trying to compete through esports, it was great that it did give us this ability in order to still connect with students uh, to create some sort of normalcy. Um, we were the only, I would say, organization that was still participating in its normal sense. Um, we were just able to go ahead and move everything remotely online. We even held a state championship online. Um, so, I mean, we're flexible in that, in that aspect, but it did go ahead and it like, it stopped some schools from being able to participate just because those students don't have the reliable internet at home. And that was tough, but, you know, running like a, a major discord server, I think we had like 1400 students in our server at the time. It, we were running community events. We were running just like fun weeknight activities that students could still engage with each other. Um, still work with their friends, still play with their friends, that kind of stuff. So in the classroom, it was still tough because we were, we had some students that wanted to be virtual, remote. We had some that wanted to be in person. We had some that, you know, all of a sudden it's two weeks and they're out because they were exposed or whatever it is. Um, so I was at least comfortable because I'm used to doing live streaming uh, through esports. So it's like, oh, like, I'll just record all my lessons. I'll throw them up on YouTube. Like they can watch them live on Twitch or my YouTube channel because I can use like restream.io and I can actually live broadcast to multiple outputs. I could do like different overlays. So that way it's not like they're just seeing my face. They're still at least seeing like the lesson plans. Like I can do different scenes to where, you know, my presentation is full screen with like a little bit of me down here or vice versa, or if it's 50 50. So like, Going through esports and learning live production really helped me 
be okay in that type of environment because I'm so used to doing it anyways. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it had its challenges and getting back to a school to where I was like, how do you guys operate? And they're like, well, normally we do this. And I'm like, oh, that would make sense. Yeah. In a normal setting. But uh, yeah, just going back and forth, like all of a sudden it was like, I needed to do lesson and unit plans. And then they're all of a sudden like, well, we're going remote now for two weeks. Like, and it's like, okay, uh, I will switch. Like, that's fine. So it was, uh, it was overwhelming. It was definitely overwhelming to go back in that environment, but um, you know, only had, only had one little breakdown, one little, one little cry session out in the vehicle. And I think that was pretty good given <laughs> the whole COVID situation. Like I'm pretty honest with students. I'm like, it's rough for all of us, man. I just went out to my truck and cried for 15 minutes instead yeah. of eating lunch. So yeah. yeah, don't be afraid to say like, Hey, I'm, I'm struggling today, Dolly. Like, okay. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm empathetic. So <laughs> no, yeah, I hear that. I hear that. Uh, the frustration and, and, and going through that change, but I, I do. Yeah. You, you mentioned restream and I'm like, wow, like that. I remember using that as well. Um, it, it was, uh, it was pretty amazing. Um, so I, I want to shift gears here a little bit on, okay. So th- back in the day, I'm going to tell you a damaging story here around esports, right? Um, <clears throat> we had a video game design class and right, we were, we're in business and, and as a business educator, you know, but maybe our audience doesn't know that we're never quite tenured. We, we are like an elective out here and students choose to take us. So we, we've got to do a darn good job of creating some quality content and, in, and, in, in curriculum and education for, uh, the youth that, that connect with them and then also connect with, uh, you know, all kinds of other subjects. So, um, we were doing something at lunch uh, where uh, we brought down uh, a previous uh, colleague of mine um, who's an awesome uh, esports leader. Um, this was back in mid 2000s to 2015s, I guess. Uh, and an English teacher came up and was like, why are you bringing a video game down here? Right. Like this, this is kind of, you're kind of poaching students, you know, to come over. And, and he was very adamant about it. And, you know, the, the argument didn't escalate, but it's there. Um, how do you deal with that or is there any of that, you know, where, oh, it's just video games because, and then maybe kind of educate us on what kind of learnings are going on behind this. Cause I know my brother is actually a video game designer out in California. I totally get it, but I don't think a lot of people in academia get it. So what does that crossroad look like? So I think as far as the skill set that they're developing, um, when they're playing, I guess, in a competitive sense, my students are showing up, we practice. Monday, Tuesday, we have a match day on Wednesday, and then we have a VOD review, which we, we watch our, our stream from the day before to figure out where we could improve. Um, so we're practicing essentially an hour and a half Monday and Tuesday. We have an hour and a half match on Wednesday, and then we spend about an hour reviewing our film from the day before. Um, we're talking about, you know, just strategy. We're talking about communication. We're talking about where where somebody overcommitted and holding them accountable to that situation, or they weren't listening to comms, something along those lines. Um, That's just the teamwork side of it. And then you get into the game itself. So we're playing Smite this semester, and it's a 5v5 MOBA to where you play different deities from around the world and different historical periods and stuff of that nature. But you're building items, you're managing wave pushes, you're looking for neutral objectives, you have to like keep track of cooldown timers, when people use certain abilities, so you know when you can attack, when you can defend. Um, We just spent like 30 minutes yesterday looking at the patch notes as they updated items, they made changes to characters, whether it's like, oh, well, they changed 10 damage on this. And while to the the non-gamer person, they're like, okay, 10 damage. It's not a big deal. Right. But to some of the gamers were like 10 damage. They took that off. Like, no way. Like now, if you build this, this, and this, you're, you're doing 200 less damage per attack. And like, they can run those numbers in some of their heads. Or if you go to our smash players, if there's a nerf, they're like, oh my God, instead of two and a half frames now it hits in two frames. And they're like, that, like, that's a huge difference to them. Like that's a competitive either advantage or disadvantage to the character that they play. And so they understand all of these like little intricacies and the mechanics that are programmed into these games. Then you have the classroom side of it to where like in business, 
I talk, like I use my nonprofit as an example in class all the time. Like in my law class, I show them the, like some of the, like the emails that I get as far as with lawyers or with some of these other companies that are offering exclusives and contracts and stuff of that nature. And we actually dissect it all in class because it's real world application. And I think as a business teacher, that's what I tried the most to do is to figure out where is the real world application. Um, I would really like to get our my marketing cohort in order to use his social media marketing campaign to help take over some of our socials. Um, I, I mean, I have five interns around the state right now. They're all high school students, basically, that are doing either broadcasting, graphic design. I would like to get more into social media marketing just to give them an actual example of what they're doing. They learn theory in the classroom. Now here's application. And we can actually, I hate to say it, but grade performance on it. Like if we set objectives or learning targets for our social media campaign, how close did we come to hitting it? Did we hit it? Like, where did we see more success based upon which posts that we were doing? So we can bring all of that CTE type of education into this program. And that's why I'm such a big advocate of this is because I use it in my classroom. It's not just an after school competition. It's, I now have the ability to give students a platform to test some of this real stuff. Not like an actual, like a simulated program that's got, you know, simple pathway choices, which is gamification, right? But now they actually have like a real source to go to and say like, this post hit 75% of 25 to 34 year olds on the Facebook. Sorry, that made me sound real bad too. The <laughs> face. I say that too. <laughs> uh, going on the Google machine, yeah. you know? Um, but so like, it's real classroom application, even... If you look at video game design, bring in the English side of it, go into story writing, character development. You're talking about like building your, your protagonist and everything like that within the story. How are we creating these custom pathways? And then you take the English side of it and now you pair it with the computer science. How are we programming those pathways? How are we going to design those characters within our art classes? And, and I don't know, I, I obviously I'm passionate about video games and I love it because it engages kids. Yeah. I mean, we're talking 85% of kids are playing some sort of video game, male, female, non-binary, whichever demographic that you look at, mm -hmm. they're all playing something, whether it's Candy Crush to Call of Duty to Plants vs. Zombies to Minecraft, it's, it's across the board. Yeah. So we're always talking about trying to find engaging ways to work with students. And I don't know, I use gaming. I'm just listening. And, and as our listeners are listening, I'm thinking, you know, right away that there's algebra algebra in there there's there's all these like kpis right you obviously key performance indicators are out there uh there's so much writing and language and and two podcasts ago i talked to um tom liam lynch and and about plotting plots very interesting like merging of you know what's happening um around the gaming industry and and gaming in itself and how it does pull down silos uh, here's here's a big question. So Mike is the the new builder of a new high school, uh, and 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 or middle school, um, and you can do whatever you want, um, uh, you know, through gaming or whatnot. What how do you, what does it look like to you? What is what does that like next generation of a of a high school look like? And I know that's a ginormous question, but um, you know, see if you can construct something around that or at least a wireframe it would probably look very similar to like i'm just going to say a, like a traditional sport program um we have our dedicated facility that we use um you know our special machines that we use just for esports i'd love to have like a booth area like i'm going to use soccer as an example because i usually work there too um i would love to have a booth up there that's live streaming as well like a soundproof booth that's got a production team that's in the background there, kids that are doing play-by-play, -play, kids that are running the stream, kids that are mo like moderating chat as well for the feature. I have uh, one to two kids that are running the social medias up front as far as like building hype for it. I'd love to have even like a screen printing facility in school. So that way we could make jerseys in-house, we could make flags, we could make hats, we could make everything for that. Um, and then I too, I would like to see more kids getting into even the weight room, um, tracking some of those healthy habits as far as how, 
how is a good night's sleep going to make you more productive, not only in the classroom, but also gaming as well? There's the data's out there. Um, how much are you actually actively reading? You know, just working your brain and, and being able to critically think and analyze situations and make predictions uh, down to even just doing simple body weights, meditation and, and focusing on minimizing their anxiety in stressful situations or how do they handle some of that anxiety in those stressful situations. Um, it's There's a lot of research that's coming out. And I mean, if I had the ability to design from the ground up, I would definitely be starting even in the weight room as of simple, just body weights, simple yoga stretches or Pilates, because we're going to be sitting for a prolonged period of time. You know, what are different stretches and activities that we can do that keep the blood flowing while sitting for a prolonged time too. Yeah. And then I'm going to say a lot of community support as well. Right. Parent, parents showing up in the dozens to support their kids instead of sitting out on a rainy April day where there's <laughs> snow in the forecast for softball and soccer, you get to sit inside and actually watch your kids play on stage and they're cheering and supporting them on that. Go ahead. And that's a big one too. Oh yeah. <laughs> As a parent, I agree. Yes, absolutely. Put me in a nice chair, a couple of screens, some, some, some action happening, um, which you do see it every once in a while. And it's new to my generation as a Gen Xer here, you know, like we see this and we're like, what's going on? Where's the NFL game or whatever. Um, but you do see it growing. And, and with that, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, the, the teams that, that you're working with and, and where they're going. There's an event coming up. Um, what, what are some of the things that are uh, coming up with you uh, in the next few months and even into the summer months? So next month, we'll actually have our state championship for Rocket League and Smite. It's going to be held on May 14th at North Central Technical College in Wausau, Wisconsin. It's open to everybody to show up. Um, we'll have right now I have 10 colleges that are on my list that are coming to do active recruitment. Um, we're, we're starting to do some tallies right now. I think we're over at least a dozen kids so far in the state of Wisconsin that have received scholarships, but obviously we'd like to get that number higher. Um, but with those colleges being there, we're also looking to actively have like panels that are designed for community members, like how to support this as a parent, like what, what situations are you looking at? How do you support your kid? who is more interested in gaming than baseball. Um, so we're trying to do some of that. We'll have three different live stream channels going so we can have televised games for all of them. Um, there's a few other like conferences that are likely coming up this summer. I'm working with a couple of uh, local like workforce development organizers here in the state of Wisconsin and nationally in order to help build some additional curriculum. Uh, in order to go ahead and try to help with some schools for that. Um, you know, it's, there's always a ton going on. Um, like I'll be running like coaches feedback and student feedback. So after every season, I give them the opportunity to voice their concerns. Like what went well, what didn't go well? How would you like to see this change? It's not perfect. You know, it's the same thing that we do in the classroom. We, we always reflect on what we're doing and improve best practices. So, I mean, I'll, I'll host something like that, allow kids and, and coaches to give feedback. Um, yeah, I, I think I think that's the gist of it at this mm -hmm. point. Big state championship and then a lot of reflection. Yeah. Maybe, a, maybe a week break in there. We'll see uh, before <laughs> I, I hit the ground running again this summer and just keep keep grinding. Say, say there's a, an educator, teacher, administrator who's on the fence about bringing in or, or kind of maybe inflating their, their eSports programs. What do you, where's a good place for them to start and to, uh, you know, um, maybe even reach out to? Depending on what state that you're in, um, if you just reach out to me, if you wanted to reach out to me on socials, um, I, I have no problem. I can put you in contact with about 15 state leaders or 15 state associations. Um, if you're just a teacher that's looking to get started, I have some documentation that's available on our website of how we in Wisconsin help schools on board. Um, every state is just a little bit different as far as like how they advise you to do it, because it depends on local ecosystem. One thing that works here in Wisconsin doesn't work for our friends down in Illinois because their school system works just a little bit different. We're different. Uh, <laughs> And so like just understanding that. And I think a big thing that I would tell everybody is don't rush to implement this. It's okay to start small and start with one team. 
That's it. Start with one team. I know some kids are going to be let down that it's only one team, but you have to start somewhere because if you just jump in with seven, eight teams, you're going to get burnt out real fast. You're going to be overwhelmed. You're not going to have time to do everything well. Uh, it's going to be just rushed and everything's going to be chaotic. Whereas I know we're teachers, we like to have some structure and organization to things that we do. And so when you start with one, then you keep growing. And so once you're done with your first year, then you maybe add two more teams. Maybe you then look to see like, hey, let's start streaming. Hey, let's build a social media presence for our program. Hey, let's, you know, there's all these different things that you can start to add. And maybe by year three, year four, like it's a sustainable program. It's not just a one-off. And now you have the same thing that you have with football or basketball in your school. You have this buy-in from your students. You have students that are coming from the middle school that are like, oh, I'm looking forward to this. Like, I can't wait to play. And that's how this creates longevity within our schools. No, I appreciate that. And thank you so much. Um, what are the socials that that people can connect with you, if you don't mind sharing? Sure. If you just search uh, my name out on LinkedIn, Mike Dolly, D-A-H-L-E, you should be able to go ahead and find me. If you're looking on Twitter, it's at Mr. Dolly, no spaces. Uh, if you reach out to even the WIHSEA.org, that's our nonprofit website, or you can reach out to isea.gg and that will connect you with the national organization as well. So there's a lot of resources out there and, and we're teachers too. So sharing resources is kind of what we do. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. Well, I'll drop all those uh, connections in the uh, notes to this podcast. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for sharing your story. Uh, keep up the great work and best of luck uh, coming up in the uh, tournament. Um, I want to see a big trophy. Maybe I'll put that out there uh, as well. I got those um, and ordered. And obviously some more scholarships. I know they're coming your, your students' way. So thank you so much for doing uh, everything you do, uh, not only for education and esports, but basically just growing young people. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thank you all for listening to the Disrupt Education Podcast. Until next time, we'll see you later.